hi everyone welcome back to the channel in this video we will see how we can mount the storage location in the databricks to mount the storage location in the databricks we need to have first of all the first requirement is you should be having one storage account okay and storage account is should be present in the resource group so if you see here i have a resource group here and inside this resource group i have couple of storage accounts okay so these are all storage accounts out of these four i think two are blobs and two are adls now i wanted to let's suppose i wanted to fetch the data which is there inside this particular storage account now in order to do or in order to fetch the data in from this storage location using databricks i need to create a mount point in the databricks so mount point it will be like your uh linked service or maybe the connection between this storage location and the databricks so to create this mount point we need to create one service principle now to create the service principle you need to click on this azure active directory inside the directory you need to go to app registration okay and you need to register a new app okay because this uh, service principle can be created with the uh, for the use with the application or the hosted services okay so uh, it will be like an identity okay so we are creating one identity you can say now you can name it let's say temp something 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 or uh, let's say test it click register i will be going with the default selection and inside this if you see i have an option to create the secrets now after creating the app you need to create one secret you can name your secret anything let's say secret yt i'll name it as and i'll set the expiry date for this secret let's say 6 months 3 months 12 months or something i'll keep it as it is by default and it is done you have the secret with you now you need to copy this secret and keep it safe because as soon as you'll refresh the page or you'll move to some other page this secret you'll not be able to retrieve later let me show you what i mean to say so if i don't copy it i'll go back fresh let's say okay and uh, yeah this is my app registration inside app registration if i see my secret here now it is hidden right i cannot see it and there is no other way by which i can see it later on as well so that is the reason i told you to keep your secret safe apart from the secret you need two more things one is client id and the other one is tenant id you need to save these three values because these three fields will be required to establish the connection okay or to create a mount point basically now this is done in my in this video i'll not be using this app principle or something because i already have one okay uh my bad uh, this is the one yeah so if you see here i already have um, one registration done with the name of example so i'll be deleting it or i'll not be using it for this video so i'll be continuing with this one okay i already have the tenant id client id and the secret id with me right but before that before moving to the databricks what i have to do is i have to link or i have to establish or i have to uh, add this service principle to the storage account so what i'll do i'll go to my storage location this is my storage account and here i have an option access control so i wanted to give this access or uh, i wanted to establish the authorization and authentication for this storage location with the help of service principle to add it i need to click on add role assignment and i will be adding a default role which is called contributor rule storage blob container okay and this is a contributor rule this is enough for us i'll click on next and it will ask me to add that service principle right the service principle which we have created i'll show you one more time this is the one i'm talking about example okay so i'll go back so location click on i am okay add role assignment i need to select role 
click next and select member so instead of member i am using you can select user group or service principal right so i'll be selecting service principal here so example is my service principal i have selected it i need to click on next and assign it done it will take 30 to 40 seconds so in my case it is giving me the failed notification because the assignment i have already done it late, earlier okay but in your case you'll not be getting this error message okay so the assignment is done uh, service principle is created everything is done from the azure side now i need to move to the databricks so in the last video i told you how you can create a notebook so you can click on this create create notebook and you can name it anything whatever you want let's say mount uh, let's say blob okay now okay so what you have to do is you have to add the configuration so i already have a code to add the configuration okay okay uh, you can use this code directly okay it's a reusable code i'll be keeping uh, the link from where you can get this uh, this code okay so you need to change this client id client secret and tenant id okay so what i will do in my case i already as i told you right i already saved these things so i'll be pasting it here okay and i'll run it so the variables are created and i'm using these variables inside this second command now after creating this configuration i have to create the mount points okay so to create the mount points you need to use file utility and there is a function called mount right because anyways we are going to read the files and the folders present in that particular location and you see here there is a raw and the storage account name so i can keep my storage account name here directly okay so my storage account name is blob one right this is the one yeah sorry okay so this is my storage location and uh, apart from this i have this container name raw in my case i don't have this raw container so i'll change the name of the container i'll keep it as source file again you can make it parameterized you can keep a variable out of it okay it is up to you now you need to run it oh sorry i need to run this one again because this variable just now i have created and then it is done it is running it is creating the mount point so the mount point name will be like this mnt storage account source file you can name it anything it is up to you once this is done we can see the list of mount points which we have in our system okay so to get the list of those uh, mount points we can use one function db utils utility function of files file um, basically file utility system file uh, utility which has mount function right so display db utils fs mounts it will it will give you the list of mounts created for the in the databricks okay for different storage locations and i'm expecting my my uh, the service pro and the mount point which we have created for our storage account should be there so let's see so this is the one which we have created mnt blob source file right with this name we have created so this is the mount point and uh, this is the source okay so now on we need to refer this mount point to get the data files or folders which are there in this mount point okay so to see how many files how many folders or whatever we have in this particular location i can use one more function okay from db utils class only which will call list dot ls okay and inside ls i need to put this path uh, sorry yeah and i can simply run it 
so you will see we have couple of files over here right like parquet csv json to make it more uh, i mean uh, more proper or more uh, appropriate to see okay i can display it right and it will give you as in a table so if you see here these are the files okay this is the file name and this is the size of files okay so this is how you can create the mount point and you can access these files now in the next video we will see how we can read these different type of files with the help of this mount point so thank you thanks for watching this video i hope this video will be helpful for you